morning and a very warm welcome to our special online Mothering Sunday service here at St. Mary's Wootton this morning. It's great to have you with us. My name is Philip Young and I'm the curate here. Well, I hope that you're ready uh, to sit, to stand, to sing, to dance, uh, to do actions, uh, and to listen up because we are going to have a really action-packed next 20 or so minutes uh, celebrating our mothers and hearing from the Lord Jesus. So as we begin our time together, let me pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for our mothers and all those who've cared for us in our lives. Thank you that you comfort us as a loving mother comforts her children. And so we pray for joy in our service this morning. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Well, just how do you describe the God who made the heavens and the earth and everything in them? Our opening song attempts to do that. So please would you lift up your voice and sing our God is a great big God. Day, Sarah. After waiting to have a child for so many years, you must be overjoyed to have Isaac. Today is about you and all those who are still waiting. Happy Mother's Day, midwives of Israel. You risk your own safety to ensure the survival of countless children. Today is about you and all those who care for children and call it work. Happy Mother's Day, daughter of Pharaoh. By welcoming Moses into your family, you showed so much love. Today is about you and all foster and adoptive parents. Happy Mother's Day, Naomi. You walked with Ruth as a friend and cared for a child as your own grandchild. Today is about you and all grandmothers and extended family who care for children. Happy Mother's Day, Hannah. You let go of Samuel, even though it hurt you. 
Today is about you and all those whose children are not living with them right now. Happy Mother's Day, Anna. Life didn't go as you had hoped, yet you found peace and worth in your service to God. Today is about you and all those experiencing heartache at how things have turned out. Happy Mother's Day, Lois and Eunice. Your faith changed Timothy's life. Today is about all those who are playing a part in raising the next generation. Mother's Day is about you, whatever your role might be. Hi. I was just reading the newspaper and there's a job advert here. I thought maybe you'd like to apply. Job title. Mummy, mum, mother. Job description. To care for, discipline, teach, raise, guide and nurture children. During the first few years, you will never be apart from the child. And then as the child grows, the job requires you to drive them to and from school and well, anywhere they want to go. You'll also be required to plan and carry out birthday parties every single year. Help with homework, uh, teach them to drive, wait for them to come home late at night. Oh, and offer emotional support for any drama that may well come up. You need to be a willing role model for the child leading by example every minute of every single day. Job requirements. Experience in building Lego, assembling complicated toys. Skills in providing meals and many, many snacks and or nursing, all very useful to this role. The job requires immense patience and humility since there is no feedback regarding your performance. Additionally, you should be skilled in communication so you can offer support and guidance to the child. Lastly, the job requires someone to have unending energy and also not really liking sleep would be good too. Job hours and pay. The job is 24 hours a day. There are no sick days. There is no holiday. Oh, and there's no pay either. Do you want to apply? Sounds like it needs a superhero, doesn't it? You might have recognised uh, your mum or someone that cares for you in that list. Maybe it's a friend or a teacher or someone from church. Now you might be a mum yourself or maybe you're not a mum. Maybe Mothering Sunday is a happy day for you or maybe it's not so happy and a little bit tricky. And that's okay. The wonderful thing is, is that we are all part of God's family. I'm going to lead our prayers now and we're going to use some pictures to help us think about the topic. Loving Father, be with those who find today difficult for whatever reason. We pray for children who are not with the parents that they need or who are facing uncertainty and instability. Please comfort and help them. Be near those who are sad because they are apart from those that they love. Please help us to remember that you love us perfectly and we are part of your family. Let your love be present in every home. Amen. Dear God, thank you for those who care for us in their work, teachers, doctors, nurses, midwives, social workers, and all the other roles. Please fill them with your Holy Spirit and equip them to do the, the work they do. We especially thank you for teachers as many children have returned to school this week. Please protect them. Please give them energy and enthusiasm as they welcome the children back into their classes. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the people you have put in our lives that care for us. We give thanks for all who care for us, all who have encouraged us and helped us grow, all who have forgiven us, all who have looked after us, all who have supported us when times were hard, all who have listened to us, all who have challenged us and all who have told us about you. Amen. Lord, we thank you for our mothers. We thank you for all those who care for us in quiet, often unrecognisable ways. 
We thank you for all those who care for others in patience and love. We are sorry for those times when we have failed to care for others and pray that you will teach us to care as you do. Thank you that Jesus has rescued us once and for all. Amen. In my wrestling and in my doubt, in my failures you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. You are the peace in my troubled sea. today is from Matthew chapter 20 verses 20 to 28. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons and kneeling down asked a favour of him. What is it you want? he asked. She said, grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup I'm going to drink? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit at, right, at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by the Father. 
When the ten heard about this, they were indignant with the two brothers. Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to turn on our ears, open our eyes and soften our hearts as we learn more about you today. Amen. Here's a question for you. When was the last time you became first at anything by being last? Has it even happened? It doesn't sound like something that usually happens, does it? But we all want to be great, don't we? Well, today we are going to learn about what it means to be great in God's eyes. Now, I'm going to use some actions, so feel free to join in as we go on. Next question. Who has heard of superheroes? Can you name any? I've got two here. What do they have in common? They are all powerful, successful, and they all have superpowers, don't they? What about royalty? What do kings and queens and princes and princesses have in common? How about power and money and VIP status? Now, have you ever heard of a superhero giving up their power? I mean, there might be one somewhere in comic book land, but it's not very common, is it? What about a prince or a princess? Have you ever heard of a prince giving up everything? Now, you might have heard of one recently, but has he really given up everything? This morning's passage is about two sons and their mum. Now we're told in the passage that the mum is Zebedee's wife. And we know from other places in the Bible that the sons are called James and John. So, James and John's mother has a favour to ask Jesus. It's not completely a surprising request, she knew Jesus really well. She was probably his aunt, in fact. And mums usually want their children to do well, don't they? So here she is. She's knelt down before Jesus and she asks him if her sons can sit on the right and the left of Jesus, right next to him in his kingdom. They thought it would be great to be heroes, to be superheroes. And Jesus listens to her, he responds gently. He doesn't get cross at the question, he listens. Jesus is interested in what we say we want and we can bring things to him safely without any fear of being laughed at or being told off. That's amazing. But Jesus also knows what we need far better than we do ourselves. And he says to them, you don't know what you're asking. Let me tell you what you need. Let me tell you how to live. So what next? The rest of the disciples hear about James and John's request and how do you think they react? Well, they want to be superheroes too and they think that James and John have got in there first and they're not very happy about it. In fact, the Bible says that they are indignant. Now that means that they think it's not fair. How do you look and act when something's not fair? Maybe it's a bit like this, and you might stamp your feet too. So Jesus gathers them all and he tells them that they're also wrong. And he says, let me tell you about greatness. Rulers want to be above everyone else. They want to be superheroes. To be great in the world's eyes is based on importance and success and popularity. And we often do the same sometimes, don't we, and follow the world's rules. But Jesus says that his followers should be different. His disciples should be different. We should be different. To be great, we need to be servant-hearted. We need to be servants. Jesus shows us how to live. And he didn't come to be a superhero. He came to be a servant. And not only did he give up his superpower, he also gave up his life. And he did that for us. His death was a ransom, a price that no one else could pay so that we could be free. We need 
to move from here, this idea of greatness, to here. From here to here. Jesus cares about our questions and he cares about us and he shows us his heart of service. And it's only when you and me, we understand how much Jesus served us that we are willing and able to serve others. So James and John's mum and James and John and all the rest of the disciples thought they needed to be superheroes, to be great. But Jesus showed them that to be great, we need to be servants, not superheroes. So my question for you this week is, how can we be less of a superhero and more of a servant? so blessed here in the UK to have an ample supply of vaccines to, uh, against uh, COVID-19. Many poorer nations in the world uh, do not have the kind of supply that we have. And if you'd like to do something about that, uh, you can contribute to the work of COVAX, which is an attempt uh, to raise funds and to distribute these vaccines uh, generously to poorer nations. Uh, there's a link on the screen now that you can use to do just that. On Monday the 19th of April at 7.30 on Zoom, we will be having our annual parochial church meeting. It's an opportunity to look back and give thanks for all that God has done, to take stock of where we are uh, and to think about and pray about that and to look forward about uh, and to think about where we could be uh, under God uh, in the year ahead. Um, anyone can come, but if you'd like to vote in it, you do need to be on the electoral roll. Um, if you have questions about whether you, you can be on that, you can send them to Alison Cable, who's our uh, electoral roll officer, or Peter, our vicar. Uh, otherwise, you can just use the link on the screen now to download that form and complete it and hand it to Alison. As ever at 11.30 this morning, we have our Zoom coffee. It'd be great to, um, to
to see you there so that we can encourage one another, hear from one another and support one another uh, practically. But let's close our time together with uh, the collect for Mothering Sunday. Let's pray. God of compassion, whose son King Jesus, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal through King Jesus, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen.